Roman aqueducts are one of the most amazing inventions of the ancient world. They were huge structures built to carry fresh water from faraway sources into cities and towns. Today we turn on a faucet and clean water pours out instantly. But in ancient Rome, this was only possible because of the aqueducts, carefully engineered channels, bridges, and tunnels that worked almost like magic, even though they were made over 2,000 years ago. The Romans understood that a city could not grow without clean, reliable water. People needed it for drinking, cooking, bathing, farming, and cleaning. As Rome became larger and more crowded, wells and small streams were no longer enough. So around 312 BCE, the Romans built the first aqueduct, the Aqua Appia. Over the next centuries, they built many more. Eventually, 11 major aqueducts supplied the city of Rome, bringing in millions of gallons of water every day. What made aqueducts special was the way they used simple science. Instead of pumps or machines, aqueducts relied on gravity. Engineers built the channels with a very slight downward slope. This tiny angle allowed water to flow smoothly for miles and miles. Some aqueducts traveled more than 50 miles from their water sources in the mountains. The Romans carefully measured and planned every inch, because if the slope was too steep, the water would rush too fast. If it was too flat, it would stop moving. Most of the aqueducts were underground. This protected the water and kept the channels hidden from enemies. But in some places, the land dipped into valleys or had hills that needed to be crossed. In these areas, the Romans built huge stone bridges called arcades. These are the tall, multi-level structures, with repeating arches that many people imagine when they think of Roman aqueducts. The most famous example is the Pont du Gard in France, an enormous three-tiered bridge that still stands today. Inside the aqueducts, the water moved through long channels lined with stone, brick, or a special waterproof cement called Opus Cementitium. Workers also added small access points called inspection shafts so engineers could climb in to clean and repair the channels. Keeping the aqueducts clean was important because dirt, leaves, or mineral buildup could slow down or contaminate the water. When the water finally reached the city, it didn't go straight to people's houses. Instead, it first flowed into large holding tanks called reservoirs. From there, it was split and sent through underground pipes to fountains, public baths, gardens, and sometimes wealthy homes. Most Romans collected water from public fountains each day. Rich families who paid special taxes could have water piped directly into their villas. Aqueducts didn't just bring water. They changed the way Romans lived. With plenty of fresh water, the city could support huge bathhouses where people gathered to bathe, relax, and socialize. Farmers grew larger crops thanks to irrigation. Streets were cleaner because running water helped wash away dirt. Even the famous Roman toilets and sewer systems depended on the constant flow from the aqueducts. The aqueducts also showed the skill and ambition of Roman engineers. Their constructions required teamwork, precise measurements, and strong materials. Many of the aqueducts lasted for centuries, even after the Roman Empire fell. Some are still standing today, and parts of old Roman water systems are even used in modern Europe. Roman aqueducts are a reminder of how creativity and problem-solving can change the world. With nothing but stone, tools, and smart thinking, the Romans figured out how to bring water over mountains, across valleys, and into giant cities. Their work helped millions of people live healthier lives. And even thousands of years later, their ideas still influence the systems that carry water to our homes.